Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am fantastic. Today, I want to talk about antitranspirants. Fairly easy thing to talk about. It's not too terribly complex. I suppose I should go ahead and talk about what is an antitranspirant. And, well, just like it says right here on the bottle, reduce moisture loss when plants are under stress due to winter kill, wind burn, or drought and other reasons. So transpiration is the process where vapor is released from your plants. Take in water from their roots, that water carries nutrients all the way up, and then they release the excess moisture through the leaves. That is transpiration. Sometimes you can see transpiration in action. Uh, if it's, you've had a lot of rain, like tons and tons and tons of rain, and the air's kind of muggy, there have been moments, just a couple times, where I was coming over a hill and could see the woods off in the distance and could actually see that steam. It looks like steam, clouds coming out from the woods. That's transpiration. An anti-transpirant is something that is supposed to help stop the transpiration. It's supposed to help seal water into your plants, into their foliage. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, like it said on the front, drought is a good reason. When you are transplanting something, maybe you're planting a shrub in the like heat of the summer when you really shouldn't be, or just planting anything when you really shouldn't be planting something, this will help it maintain its moisture, maintain its water levels. It'll be able to establish a little bit more easily because it's not losing water, not losing as much water. This prevents the loss of water through the foliage. Now, I use this for winter protection mainly for plants that are evergreen or maybe right on the cusp of growing here but shouldn't. So plants like I'm in zone 6A, 6B, right on the border there. And uh, so I have things like crepe myrtles, I have several palms and camellias and akubas, lots of things outside that typically don't grow where I live. So during the winter, I have to use an anti-transpirant, something to seal over the leaves to keep the wind from blowing the moisture out of the plant. It helps give them a little bit more cold hardiness. There are varying degrees of that. You know, some people say a good anti-transpirant can add 5 to 10 degrees of cold hardiness. Some say 2 to 3. I would say more like 2 to 3, but it varies with what you read. And every winter's different, so it's hard to say what you're going to get. The main thing is that you're putting a coating over the leaves of the plants to keep the wind from blowing the moisture out. Because when it's cold outside, the plants don't take up moisture the same way they do in the spring and summer. They can take in some, but not a lot. One of the main things that kills potted plants during the winter is if I forget to actually go out and water them. No matter how cold it is, I don't care if it's snowing and 20 degrees outside, I, you have to make sure at least once a month, really every two weeks, that you give them some water. And this sort of is my fail-safe when it comes to that. It gives me a little bit more wiggle room. The majority of these are made with an oil from pine trees. But, you know, pine trees, they have a waxy coating on them, and that helps protect them from the winds, and then they've somehow packaged it up, and that's all the fun science stuff. I, I really don't know. But it works. How you use them varies. There's lots of different brands. This is Wilt Proof. There's Wilt Stop, Antitrust 2000. I want to say there's one called No Wilt and there's one called Freeze Proof. I don't know if Freeze Proof is still being sold, but there, there's lots of them. You can just look up an anti-transpirant on Google. It'll give you all different things. The effectiveness to which I can't guarantee for anything on any of them. I like Wilt Proof. I don't know why, just because it's what I've used an awful lot. Wilt Stop is fine. I have noticed Wilt Proof seems to stick to the plants better and a little bit longer. And Wilt Stop, well, it really clogs up my sprayer much more intensively than this does. I'm going to get to that, though. So how do you use this? Well, they all have different ratios. This one for wintertime is a 1 to 5 ratio. Other times of the year, it says to do 1 to 10, meaning that what I, what I do is I go ahead and I fill up my sprayer about halfway. You do not want to pour this into an empty sprayer. It's just going to stick to the bottom. So I filled it about halfway, and then I measure out my solution. I did, I think I did two gallons today, so I used, I think, about six cups. No, I did three. I did three gallons, so I used nine cups of the solution. And then I filled it the rest of the way up. I shake it. You shake this really well before you pour it out, too. Then go ahead, pressurize your sprayer, and you want to cover your leaves until the water is running off. And it's very important that you spray the top and the bottoms of the leaves. I do this on my azaleas, my palms, 
uh, even on the bark of some of my plants, like the crepe myrtles. This helps prevent the wind burn. The wind, you know, it's this cold, dry wind blows across those plants and just takes all the moisture out, killing the plants. And on the crepe myrtles, it just kind of kills the wood. They'll usually come back from the ground. This is just kind of an extra security step that I take to help ensure that they'll come back from the wood. It's not always 100%. It just kind of depends on my winters here. Newly transplanted plants. I did a whole bunch of planters this past week, so I put it on my hollies. I have a new magnolia. I think it's a saucer. It's not a saucer magnolia. Sweet Bay magnolia, maybe. I think that's what it is. Which is semi-evergreen where I live. Just like 40 miles south, they're evergreen all year. I'm just not quite warm enough. But some of them around here stay evergreen. So I'm making sure to coat that one really, really well. Spray the top, the bottom, the trunk, every single branch. I put it on my honeysuckles, on my hydrangea trees. Uh, junipers benefit greatly from this because they're very susceptible to windburn and being basically freeze-dried during the winter months. And for my palms, particularly my uh, windmill palms, those I usually will give them two sprays. I'll give them a spray now, which I've already done, and then I will normally go through in about three weeks to a month and give them another spray. This does say it lasts four months, so you don't need to keep doing that, but it's just habit and it's been working, so I, I keep on doing that. And you can do this on plants that aren't outside in the cold t as well. It's like my adenidia palms. I could spray those down, help them hold in their moisture. I don't really need to, but I could. But I would do that at a 1 to 10 ratio, not a 1 to 5. So for every, what, 5 gallon or for every gallon i have to do math hold on uh there are there's about 16 cups in a gallon so that would be about three cups one to five so that's, that's a little bit light but that's okay it's plenty it's always been fine for me if you want to do the exact math through the ounces or milliliters go ahead you do you i'm not doing that i've always done it this way and it's been fine an important thing to note with winter protection if you need to spray something with a fungicide so if you think that there might be a little bit of rot potentially starting and maybe you have an outdoor palm, a windmill palm, needle palm, whatever you're growing. You want to go ahead and spray the fungicide down into those crowns and let it dry thoroughly before applying an antitranspirant. Because if you don't, then that fungicide that you spray in there is just going to beat away and it's not going to be very effective. So if you think you're going to need to apply fungicides, do that before you spray this stuff. Another tip I can offer for your outdoor palms, if you know you live somewhere where they maybe shouldn't quite be growing, but you're doing it anyways and you're pulling it off, you can take your frost cloth or a synthetic quilt batting, whatever you're using to protect your plants from wind, and soak that. And I usually just fill up a bucket with water, and I'll add like half a cup or so of this to that, and then soak my synthetic quilt batting or frost cloth in that solution for, I don't know, several hours, sometimes overnight. Then I pull it out and I make sure it dries completely. This forms a barrier on your frost cloth to keep moisture from penetrating that fabric so water will beat off of it. This is useful when you're covering plants that are going to do better in a cold and dry condition like cactus, yuccas, um, the palm trees. You know, the, they still need moisture. Those palms still need moisture during the winter months, but it's going to help keep it out of the crown. What I normally do when I'm doing this is I will either twist that fabric up real tight, and then I tuck it into the crown of the palm. I wrap it all the way through, and this helps keep the moisture from getting in there. You can put a stake or something in the center of the palm, wrap the leaves up, and drape that over so it forms a tent to keep the moisture from getting in there. That works wonderfully as well. And it sealing up that, sealing up that frost cloth also is useful for just covering them in general. Like I just said, how you can put the tent over the top of your palm, you can also, and I've done this before and it works very well, wrap it around your banana stumps that you've cut back before you mulch them. It helps keep the moisture from getting there and helps keep them from rotting. But yeah, okay, so this stuff is great. I use it most years, not every year. This year I'm using it mostly for the sake of the video, but uh, things are kind of weird here this year. It is oddly warm. It's like 74 degrees here today, which is very unusual to the point that some of my plants have started to regrow which is not good because in a few days when it gets cold, there might be snow at the end of the week It can that could kill them. It's not going to be great for their overall health. So I really went pretty heavy with this stuff this year just to help take a little bit of the shock out of the temperature changes that are coming up. Yeah, 
nifty stuff. Pick it up if you need some. I think that's really about all I have to say for that. Oh, no, no, no. One more thing. Very important thing. The very moment you're done spraying your anti-transpirant, clean your sprayer out immediately because this stuff will gum up all the pipes, everything in there, and just ruin it. So I usually fill my sprayer up, dump it, fill my sprayer up, dump it. I do that three or four times, and then I get piping hot water, fill the sprayer with that, pressurize it, and then run it through the whole thing. So I keep pumping it until all three gallons of that hot water has run through the pipes to make sure it's all out of there because it will gum up that thing and just destroy it. So make sure you clean it out as soon as you're done. Okay, yeah, now that's it. All done, I promise. Promise I'm done this time. Hope everybody's doing well. You can follow me on Snapchat, Trop Plant Party, Instagram, Tropical Plant Party, and Twitter, Tropical Plant JC. I use Twitter more than anything else. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Comment down below. I love talking to y'all. And as always, keep on growing, everybody. Bye-bye.